Guys, one question that I've gotten over the years more than any other is how to form a prepper group. I get a question out of nowhere and a guy goes, man, I don't, we don't know what to do. We want to join with other people. We see the need. What do we do? And it's honestly the hardest to answer. Uh, for me, it was a little bit easier because I am kind of out there with my channel and all my friends know what I do. And so we've had a lot of people to approach us. Uh, one thing that I do want to say though, and we're going to look at some different ways because there are some things that you can do to form a good solid group, but there are some pitfalls as well and we're going to talk about that. Uh, one of the big things that you need to think about is having the current relationships that you already have using those. Uh, whether it's your friendships, uh, whether it's people that have common goals, common values, they have a good strong moral compass and they just suit you. These could be friends that you would enjoy having, you know, grilling out together, having dinner together, uh, just socializing at the beach or whatever. That is your first group. Those are people that you already rely on, that you have relationships with, because trust is one of the most important elements of any prepper group. Uh, the people that are in our group are people that we've already previously had connections but there were also some people that were recommended to us from people that we trusted. And they have become some of the strongest people in our group. Now with the current situation that we're dealing with, with the pandemic, uh, a lot of people are looking for the first time. They see that it's pulled them out of their normal lives and they see that there is a fragile system that we deal with and that they need to be somewhat more prepared and are more survival minded. And so right now is a great time to be able to address that. A lot of people have a fear that, you know, they may come off crazy because they are prepping. And one of the things about it right now is that preppers aren't so crazy. You know, we all have that friend that we'd really like to be part of our prepper group. And we've talked to them a number of times. They're in agreement. They say, yes, I see a need. We need to do some things. And they just never do anything. You have a meeting. They just have an excuse why they don't show up or it's real hit or miss. One of the things that I've told a lot of people is you can't push a rope. And if they're not willing to do something on their own, if they can't take the initiative, then it's best just to let it go. Because once you get into a crisis situation, typically you're gonna find those people the same. They're gonna be lazy, they're gonna procrastinate, and they're gonna be more of a drain than they are an asset. Let them come to you with their supplies and let you know when they're ready. When people are wanting to form a group, they want to find somebody. They want to find people. One thing that we always do is look at the groups that we're already a part of, which is number one, church. We have common goals. We have common faith. Uh, I'm part of a security team there of about 20 guys. And I know those guys, uh, there's some that I would really love to have in a prepper group. There's some not so much. They're still good guys, but I just really wouldn't want them in a group. So, you know, really being able to have that relationship already to where you know people. Because guys, let's face it, even with friends, you know friends that you would like to have in a group and you know friends that you just really would not. You're still friends, but you really wouldn't want to depend on them. Now, other groups are men's groups, whether it's the Lions Club, Kiwanis, or your Boy Scout troop, just different groups that you're a part of. Uh, that you already have, again, common goals, you have relationships, you're starting to really get to know them. It could be a business group. Of course, friends and family are really kind of at the top of the list. I mean, these are people that you like to hang out with, you you know, have dinner with, you have them over to your house, you go to the lake with. These are people that you have a great relationship already. You like to spend time with them. And so that really is one of your first priority. And secondly, your family. I mean, these are people that you really care about. You want to protect them. You want them to be fine in a survival situation or a crisis. And so having those people, uh, you know, up to date on what you're doing and encourage them to do the same. But again, guys, don't get frustrated because you can't push a rope. If they don't choose to do it, you have to move ahead with you and your family. Your neighbors, get to know your neighbors, uh, work together. Uh, you know, you start to know who you like around your neighborhood, you know the people that you'd like to avoid and you wanna go ahead and think about those things ahead of time. Sometimes they can prove you wrong, but guys, be a good neighbor and have good neighbor relationships because you may not be able to choose your group. You may fall into a group 
and it's good to already know how these people are going to respond and you've made investments into them and they're going to in turn make more investments into you and it builds trust first responders whether it's law enforcement you know the medical field with ems emts or firemen it's different people that come together that have again common relationships and they have a sense of doing the right thing and so i think that's a great resource and those groups can really be a big help in times of crisis veterans groups or current military joining together with those people that you know you've already working as a team together you know you have again common interest you have common backgrounds and so you can really make good relationships even stronger through a survival situation and you can join together just make sure you keep doing the right things now people that you know that are already preppers people that you can communicate with people that you can talk to uh, and forming whether it's not a group but maybe it's an alliance maybe you work together from distance those are great groups already and people that you know you may not be able to form a group with them locally but at least you can have backup plans but militia groups now one thing about militia groups is you need to be careful sometimes their ideology can be a little bit off base you want to make sure that if you do attach yourself to someone like that that it's of good moral character that they want to do the right things and that they're standing for the right things. You gotta be careful because a lot of times these groups have people that lead them that are a little bit arrogant and you don't necessarily wanna get attached to that. Small towns will come together typically uh, and people know each other in those towns. There's a lot of trust. Uh, and of course that also includes farmers and ranchers and people that are outlying that are just good solid people. You know them, you know how they're gonna respond and it makes a good solid group. And the big thing is, guys, again, it's people you have things in common with, people that you have relationships with, people that you already know a lot about. And that way you'll know who you want in your group and who you don't want in your group. Now, there are a number of things that you want to avoid. You want to avoid people that are arrogant, people that kind of take charge and just demand to lead a group. Uh, with a leader, humility goes a long way. People that will listen to others. And so you want to make sure that you have someone that may be leading the group that is going to lead it in the right direction. Uh, having a hot temper is something you definitely don't want a part of. You want cool heads. Cool heads rule the day. And so it's very important that people have a very balanced temper. Making rash decisions, just jumping in and deciding this way, being unstable, kind of going in different directions, uh, it causes a lot of chaos. And guys, you need someone, again, that's very stable, that will make good, solid decisions, again, that will listen to others. Probably one of the most important parts is a bad character. They have character flaws. Their morals are not quite up to par. Uh, you know, they can lead a group into a bad situation. You can rationalize things, uh, even breaking the law, just doing things that are wrong. And if you attach yourself to a group like that, you may find yourself in the minority. Sometimes leaders can step up and they can talk people into doing things that they really shouldn't be doing. I had a friend of mine that relayed a story to me a while back where he was talking to a group of guys that were sitting around, just some friends of his. And they were talking about prepping, and he said, yeah, I've got you know some food, we're doing this. And the guy goes, ah, we don't do that. We've got guns and ammo, that's all we care about. If we need something, we'll take it. These are guys that are law-abiding citizens right now. And you know they seem to be good people, but they are willing in a crisis situation to do the wrong things. Guys, it's very important that we continue to be who we are, doing the right thing, no matter what the situation is. Now guys, last but not least is that people are your greatest asset. Uh, you're going to need people to have a community that work together, and that's the best way to, to survive. Uh, you're going to have groups that come against you that are going to have a lot of people. And if you're of the lone wolf mentality, which to me is the biggest fallacy of the survival movement, is I've got my stuff, I worked hard, I prepared, I put my money into this, uh, I'm going to protect my family, and the heck with everyone else. And guys, you can't watch your place 24-7. You can't get all the things done that you need to get done in a crisis situation because it's a lot of hard work. You need people. One thing that I've found over the years with different groups is that some groups are looking for certain skill sets. And if you have something to bring to the table, then we'll accept you. But if you don't, we won't. 
And guys, let me just say this. You're going to need people to provide security. You're going to need people to garden, to collect wood, you know, to bring water, uh, and all the different things that need to be done just to survive. And then let the people with the specialized skills do the things that they do best, and it frees them up. And so having people is honestly one of your biggest assets. Now, should they bring something to the table? Yes, they should bring food, they should bring supplies. Now, as much as we want to build the right prepper group, there is no perfect group. Number one, none of us are perfect. And, you know, we've got to be able to compromise. We've got to be able to forgive. We've got to be able to look beyond. And we also need to be able to take advice and take counsel and work together. And so to me, number one is having a group that just works well together. Again, it may not be perfect, but if we can get through our differences for a greater common goal, that is the most important thing. So guys, while forming a prepper group is a challenge, it's something that's worth the effort. Uh, again, look through the people that you already know, your relationships. If you're kind of a loner and you're not really putting yourself with other people and you haven't built relationships, you're not going to bring a lot to the table when it comes to a prepper group. So you need to make sure that you're doing your part to be the best you can be. Use the relationships that you already have or work in forming new relationships and build some trust, get to know those people. Because guys, if you don't know them, uh, they could really surprise you in a crisis situation. So guys, don't tell everybody about what you have, but you can tell them how you think. And you can say, you know what, I'm just prepared minded. I think what we're facing is we're going through a tough time and we need to be prepared and then let them go from there. If they have a passion and they have concerns, you know, they're going to start talking about it. And then you can take these different steps to decide if that person should be in your prepper group. But the main thing is make sure that you are a valuable asset to a prepper group. Guys, if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider, one of the best resources on the web for survival. Uh, they use many of the top names in the survival community. We upload one video there that's exclusive to the Insider every week. I'll have a link down below in the description. It's well worth checking out. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. And they just have an excuse to get into a survival situation because guys, it is a lot of hard work. Okay, let's just start that over. One of the things about it right now is that preppers aren't so crazy. And this guy that keeps turning on his lawnmower is driving me crazy. <laughs>